everybody and welcome to this month's tech talk uh you might notice i am not gunny my name's chris from asin gunny your regular host will be back with next month's tech talk but for now it's myself that's overseeing proceedings today today's tech talk theme is developing an ev kit that works and is road legal on budget our guest this week was a software engineer of 15 years turned ev entrepreneur he joins us today from Brixton in South London. His name is Janosh Opperman. He co-founded Clipper Automotive in 2018, and we're privileged to be joined by him today. So, Janosh, it's over to you. Hello. Um, thanks for the intro. Um, yeah, my name is Janosh Opperman, and um, we've got now about half an hour or 20 minutes, and I will tell you um, the story of... Uh, what we've built and how we've built it and um, I'm happy to take questions at the end of this so um, yeah don't hesitate don't hesitate to ask me you know anything anything you want to know like organizational or why we did it or why we did it this way or about the electronics and all that so um, I should open my slides can you see my can you see my screen yet yeah yeah was yeah I can see your screen just fine Janosh nice one Right, um, so let's talk about uh, taxis. We've done, um, if you see, if you're London based or if you're another city with many black, black cabs, uh, such as Edinburgh, Liverpool, um, New York maybe, Oxford, um, Bristol, Cardiff, um, are kind of the the main cities in the UK where we've got black cabs. Um, the current ones are diesel, and then the market leader called LEVC um, released a new product, which is they call the LEVC TX5 um, or LEVC TX, and they talk a lot about how what a great car it is and that it's electric. But as many of you know, and many of you might might not know. Um, they're actually hybrid uh, vehicles. Um, the public things, um, they're all electric vehicles, but um, they, they have a 1.5 litre petrol engine in them. Um, and here's one, and they, you know, LEVC, the EV in e EVC stands for electric vehicle, London Electric Vehicle Company, they call themselves. I think they should be called the London Hybrid Company. Um, another problem that they have in the market is they're very expensive. They cost 70 grand for, for the vehicle. So <clears throat> uh, a couple of years ago, we thought, okay, why why can't we convert existing um, existing diesel vehicles or make our own electric vehicles, right? And um, we didn't get funding for it initially. So what we did is we put some of our own money down and did it uh, in my, my friend's garage, uh, my co-founder's garage and uh, build a prototype um, that kind of scrapped together and yeah. with, with the video with the video of that prototype working um, we were then able to raise uh, money to do it um, properly or one one level better than than before so this is what we've come up with we built a 100 percent electric taxi there is actually um well, so the market leader, they're selling the new hybrids for 70 grand. And there was actually a company called Dynamo Taxis, um, which what we've done is we took a taxi and made it electric. What they've done is they took a van, they took an electric van and made it into a taxi. Um, the considerations for legislation or for allowing a taxi to be uh, licensed in the UK as, as a black cab is you have to do all the all the normal licensing and then you have to pass the inspection from the from the local authority and uh, that market is very fragmented. The rules usually are um, you have to have the tight turning circle. Um, I think it's eight meters or something. Uh, you have, and a wheelchair a wheelchair accessibility is, is a big deal, um, which is why they come up with this peculiar shape. Um, anyway, our product itself, um, it's got a quarter of a battery, the, a 
bigger than the than the market leader. The market leader has about the hybrid has like 30 kilowatt hours in it. We put 40 kilowatt hours in it, uh, and ours is about a third lighter. Um, the tech that we've put in. Oh yeah, so we so we built uh, we built two of these vehicles, um, and we concluded 20,000 miles of of test drives, um, and we made them um, in Hackney in London. The tech that we put in, we've got some pictures here um, for the licensing it is very important that you don't modify the chassis uh because then you, you you mess with the structural integrity of the vehicle too much so we had to make our own motor mounts and do the motor mounts only by using the existing holes in the chassis um and to make it really really obvious what modification we made i said okay let's paint all the new parts that we put in Ferrari red um, or bright red. So it is very, very obvious as soon as you've got the vehicle on a lift um, to people, okay, this is the modification that we've made, um, which you can see in the top right hand corner of the slide here. This is the motor man. This is the modified Nissan Leaf gearbox um, because a Nissan Leaf motor is a, a front wheel drive motor. And this is a front wheel drive gearbox, which we modified uh, to to work with the taxi drive shaft and we had to re uh, reduce the reduction because it's still going through the taxi diff. Um, so we had to delete some cogs in here uh, and make our, make our custom adapters with very custom due joint. Anyway, the electronic side is what we really care about here. I'm a software guy by trade um, and kind of self-taught on the electronic slash high power electronic side. 80 kilowatt AC motor, which happened to be from a Leaf, uh, 7 kilowatt AC charger from another vehicle, uh, 50 kilowatt DC charging capability. That's actually software rather than hardware. Um, and then the 40 kilowatt hour battery, which brings us to the 120 mile range. Now, we didn't have enough money for full type approval. So we had to be really, really careful in how do we produce a result on a shoestring budget that actually drives now as automotive professionals i guess you will all know about other examples of companies who've raised an awful lot of money to make electric cars and had mixed results let's say um arrivals springs to mind uh, they were making the advance i think they raised 400 million pounds or something or 400 million dollars i think and had a very limited number of working vehicles, right? And we had orders, orders and orders of magnitudes less <laughs> investment than that. What they tried to do is they tried to, they invented everything, right? They invented a new chassis, they invented a new inverter, motor, um, the whole vehicle. And then on top of that, they, they said, oh, we're also gonna revolutionize the manufacturing process, um, which, you know, is, Great and ambitious, but I don't think it worked that well in the end. I'm, I think they're in trouble. Um, well, we say, okay, we could, we could do the absolute opposite. We do an electric engine swap. We do system level integration, as I call it. Um, we reuse as much from the existing vehicle as we possibly can, or from other vehicles, and create a new system. We create a kit, essentially, um, where we only have to invent what, what we need to invent. Um, this also helped with the approval process so the we went for an iva individual vehicle approval um which you can do for a few hundred pounds instead of type approval which is going to set you back uh, a few i don't know you, you might know better than me but a few hundred thousand pounds um so what we did is uh, we did an engine swap which is essentially what tesla did as well initially they uh the tesla roadster was a lotus with tesla governs in it now there were some things that we did have to invent and we did invent them and the most of the most of the stuff we didn't have to invent we we reused so the power steering pump for example is just from a Vauxhall uh, and you can get them on on eBay for like you know 100 pounds or something um so we didn't 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 go designing that um there's a special mention here to openinverter.org which is a collection of circuit boards and firmware repositories that allows you to reprogram 
inverters from existing vehicles. So we happen to have used the Leaf, but you can also use the Tesla. You can uh, the Tesla drivetrains, uh, Mitsubishi Outlander, and there's a few more got Prius, of course, and there's a few more obscure ones. We happen to use the Leaf variant. So there's one set of open source software that unlocks all of these all of these drivetrains for the for the casual more casual um, converter or engineer, which is like the cheapest way of doing this. Um, yeah, and I said, okay, system level integration. So I didn't develop my own charger. I didn't develop my own BMS. I didn't develop my own motor. I used, the, I used components uh, from existing vehicles, which also helps with um, getting this road legal because in the IVA model report, you can say, does this inverter radiate, uh, um, radiate uh, um, EMF? And then you can say, well, you proved it for, for its original use. Everything we've done is we've added shielded cables. Uh, surely the unit is still fine, uh, which then got us to the approval uh, anyway. So the, the only thing we did have to invent was a control unit that's orchestrating all of these vehicle system. Um, so you have to do the cooling, cooling, cooling circuit, the cooling routing. You have to, you know, do the wiring, of course. Uh, but all the individual components, I made a uh, drop-in. I designed the board, and uh, it's plugging into the existing vehicle connectors, um, and orchestrating the taxi system as well as the EV drivetrain systems, uh, which is a mix of uh, Leaf and Tesla, and um yeah there's some voxel in there as well we we mixed and matched essentially um what you see in the picture here is a battery management system wiring harness tester it's a little board that i designed um for all current electric vehicles have 96 lithium cells in series apart from the very new ones like the porsche taycan i think they've got um twice twice that um, the 800 volt systems. The 300 volt systems all have 96 cells in series. And this is a little LED board that it shows you if you've wired it up correctly. If not all the LEDs come on or if one of the LEDs pops, you know, uh, you know you've done it wrong. Um, and you plug this in before you plug the um, expensive BMS in so you don't burn your BMS out, which is a common, a common mistake that um, people make with this. Road legality, um, insurance, yeah, insurance is very difficult because the Venn diagram, it would be interesting to hear uh, later on if, if you guys have questions. Um, the, the Venn diagram of hard to insure vehicles, we, we had like three, like the, the, the middle of three circles here. Um, taxis are quite hard to, to insure in the first place. Uh, modified vehicles are harder to insure and modified EVs are harder to insure. And we were like in the middle of these three circles. So it took quite a while to find, uh, we did find two insurance providers in the end who understood what we wanted to do. Um, and as I said before, we've gone for an IVA um, with an electrical safety inspection where they make you do a uh, isolation resistance test. And uh, we tested to the to Reg 100. Uh, it's the first half of Reg 100. We didn't we didn't uh, write off a car in a crash test. Uh, we did the the paper exercises, the safety inspection, and then as you can see in the top right here, uh, we did the finite element analysis on uh, some battery boxes. Um, and as uh, I said this before, reusing existing EV components instead of developing it from from scratch did make the approval easier in the end. Um, yeah, and then maybe all the way back from the technology, I can, I'm, I'm really happy to, to, to dig deeper into the tech in a, in a, in a minute, if you want, um, on a very, very high level, which vehicle for which vehicles this approach is interesting is everything that's got high value in it and a long lifetime. And it's currently being pushed out by regulation. So the opposite of that is I wouldn't convert a Vauxhall Astra because if the vehicle is only worth like two or three grand or something, why bother? Um, it's it's still it's a fair amount of labor and development that goes into converting a vehicle. Um, so you would be better off, you know, binning that vehicle and getting like a, a Nissan Leaf or something. 
But if you're talking specialist vehicles, you know, like drilling machines, taxis, buses, bin lorries, everything that's very expensive and it's got a long lifetime, um, then and that's currently being looked at with a critical eye from from the legislature for its emissions, that's uh, a vehicle that's worth worth looking at for conversion rather than um, rather than developing from scratch. All right, I hope that was interesting. I think this is the last slide. Yeah. Um, there's some contact details here. So for all tax inquiries, you can go to contact at clipper.cab, not .com, clipper.cab. Um, and if you've got any other questions or you want to talk to me directly, you can reach me at janosch at kilobytes.com. And that's it. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have now. Thank you very much, Janosch. Um, we'll go to the, the Q&A section uh, in just a few moments. But if um, anybody watching today has got anything that they would like to ask, if you could please use the, the Teams chat function uh, and put your question in there. Uh, and we'll come to you in just a few moments. The week after next, there's going to be an engineering trustworthy AI workshop on the 18th of July. That's going to be in Belgravia in London. So details of that event are on the events section of the ASIN website. If you fancy coming along to that, the engineering trustworthy AI workshop. But the big event of 2023 is, of course, the 10th anniversary edition of the ASIN conference. It takes place in Solihull and it's on the 21st of September and it's free for ASIN members. So if you'd like to register for that, there's also details in the events section on the ASIN website. Also, sponsorship opportunities are available. So um, let's get on with the, the Q&A section now, Janosch, and I've got a few pre-prepared questions um, of my own. The first thing that I'd like to ask you is how much money did Clipper raise for the, the build of the vehicles? Yeah, I mean, that uh, dictated how, how, how we came up with this approach. It would have been nice to be able to, to do a full type approval, although an IVA is great for getting a vehicle on the road and collecting miles on a, on a working system. Uh, we ended up raising 300,000 pounds. That's including the money we put in from, you know, our own bank account at first. And um, I think I had Innovate UK um, icons in the, in the slides. Uh, a chunk of that came from Innovate UK as much funding. We got, uh, I think we got three, two or three grants uh, in, in, in the end from Innovate UK. The, as a as a software developer, let's stick on the stick on the IVA thing for a minute. If you build a really big system, or everybody who's all the electronics guys are going to relate to this, so if you if you if you build a really big system um, in isolation and then you turn it on all at the same time, it's not going to work, right? The you want an iterative approach, and you want to build on something that works, and you want to validate that what you works small components individually work and you want to validate it as much as possible right as early as you can the reason we went the route that we went down was that way we were because we were able to put the vehicle on the road early we could find what was broken in real in real in a real life test environment um i.e is the cooling sufficient yes or no um the only way you can find that out is by stressing it somehow and seeing seeing how the temperature goes or if, if you hit any thermal cut cutoffs or something like that. Um, and I think that's a problem that Arrival had. Or, or they they went for they went for full type approval with a fully new vehicle and everything new, 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 new. And they've got all they I'm sure they had a great inverter by itself, and I'm sure they had a great motor by itself, and I'm sure they had a, a great cooling concept by itself. And I'm sure and I think they changed like their steering like three times or something from I think it went from I think they tried fly by wire and then they went back from fly by wire to, to a rod. Um they, as soon as they put everything together they they had integration problems essentially um so which is why we didn't develop a vehicle from scratch also we didn't have the money to develop a vehicle from scratch so we just took existing systems that we know were proven the only question mark is the or the vcu or mcu whatever you want to call it the orchestration unit that i developed which was hard enough um because it needs to do like the i2c communication the can communication or all, all all that jazz um 
talking, you know, reading values from the BMS, sending commands to the inverter, reading the key position from the vehicle, uh, brake position, gear position, uh, door status, um, all of these things. Um, yeah, it was hard enough to do that. So with the tight budget, everything we, everything we could do is fast iterations, put it on the road quickly, drive it around the block, drive it, you know, drive it to Brighton and back, see how, see what breaks and see what doesn't break. So, which is why we, why we did it this way. Okay. Um, by the way, I think you're still sharing your, your screen, uh, I should point out. Um, another question for you. Um, how would this all work for, for larger vehicles? Yeah, I think in principle, in principle, it will work. Um, the surprising thing about electric motors is, or, or they're actually more powerful than combustion engines. So, the for a truck that drives from Edinburgh to London, uh, to London, um, twice a week or something, you would struggle because you have to have a lot of energy in a straight line, um, and you, you carry like heavy, heavy batteries, and you would have to do. You know, a lot of rapid charging and all that for stuff that's more localized but needs to do heavy work in a in a contained environment. It will work, it will work quite well. The interesting thing about electric motors is they've got actually they've got the torque available straight away, right? The diesel engine needs to rev up. The the electric motor is is on a is on a straight line straight away, so you've got full torque from a standstill. So you can get away with comparatively smaller motors um, if you're replacing a, a diesel engine with uh, with 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 the electric engine. Okay, um, I should say, uh, by the way, that um, to anybody watching the the live tech talk at the moment, that this is being recorded uh, at the moment, and it will be available to view for ASIN members. Um, a further question, Janos. Um, the programming and and the circuit design side of it, uh, it's never quite plain sailing. Um, was there any was there any mistakes? Yeah, we. Um, I mean, I've got some. I've got some, some interesting stories. Um, it was a steep learning curve for me, and I, as an, uh, as as a software guy, I certainly underestimated the electronics side of things. Um, so this is the first time I used. I don't know what you guys are using, if you like Eagle or KiCad or something. So this is the first time I actually made some boards in KiCad. There was a steep learning curve there. Um, as a matter of fact, in for the electronics, I was so far so brazen and so far away from understanding what I was doing initially uh, that I couldn't even tell who could help me with this and who couldn't. So I went down the wrong route with you know contractors who said, "Oh yeah, they they can do this," and then it turns out they they can't um, because they also don't have any any, any idea how MOSFET really works, which I know now, but I didn't at the time. Um, Power electronics, the, the BMS tester that I showed earlier, um, the reason I invented that, or I, 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 I made that circuit diagram is because we burned a few BMSs before um, from, from wiring issues, uh, which was an expensive mistake. So every time you burn one of those, it's like two grand or something to get a new one from this on. Um, so I think the first one I was like, okay, the next time we're just gonna measure really, really carefully. And then, the, then we burned the next one. And then I was like, okay, this is, uh, I'm going to sit down now. I'm going to make a PCB. It's going to take two days, and then that's our test. Then we only plug that in before we before we um, before we plug the next one in. So that was certainly a learning. And I know that everybody else who's converting um, converting vehicles or messing with this, or even OEMs, they um, yeah, I think um, wiring BMS wiring or spaghetti wiring, as people as people call it, because with 96 cells and you needed cell tap at every individual cell. Um, you end up with with a lot of wires, and it's really easy to get that wrong. Um, yeah, that's that BMS tester is open source as well, and open inverter as well. Which is again, I might as well plug that as uh, plug that again. Open inverter is a community of people who are all using the same the same tech. And then there's other retrofitters who say they don't, but if you look very carefully about what they've built, some stuff that you've seen maybe on television or at a trade fair or something. They say they develop their own kit. And then if you look very, very closely, you know, uh, actually they're also using open inverter stuff. And I wonder if maybe the OEMs are also getting inspired uh, or at least have an eye on the community and see see what's being done there. 
I'll say, by the way, that the uh, the image of the the Edinburgh taxi at the Fourth Bridge was uh, was most appreciated. That's uh, not far from where I am right now. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Janos Opperman um, of Clipper Automotive, coming to us today from Brixton in South London. Our next tech talk is going to be on Thursday, the 10th of August, uh, at the usual time of noon. The topic is going to be key power electronic trends in EV traction invert, uh, inverters. Uh, excuse me. Our guest will be Daniel Murphy, who is the principal technical marketing engineer at ST Microelectronics. You can register now. Again, it's on the events section of the ASIN website. I keep on directing you there, but there is a good reason for that. It is the hub of where absolutely everything is going to be happening. As I said previously, we've got the big one. It's the 10th anniversary edition of the ASIN conference that's going to be taking place in Solihull on the 21st of September. And that is going to be free for members and a bit more uh, coming up a bit sooner. Uh, is the phrase I was looking for. Uh, the week after next, in fact, it's Engineering Trustworthy AI. That's a workshop that's going to be taking place on the 18th of July in London. So you can also register for that. Again, it's the events section of the ASIN website. Thank you very much to everybody who has joined us today for this tech talk. Again, it's been recorded. So if you're watching live, you can revisit this tech talk again. If you're watching the recorded version, you are an ASIN member, enjoy. Thank you very much for joining us. Again to Janosch, thank you very much for your time this afternoon and we can wrap things up there. So thank you very much to everybody. Thanks for having me.